Good evening and welcome to my How Healthy Are You weekly conference call. My name is Dr. Thomas Brewer. I'm a PhD chemist and for today's call I'm going to be talking about diet soda and sugar cravings. Now one thing I've noticed all my life when people consume diet soda compared to regular soda, that'd be a sugar-containing soda, is it tends to be that those consuming the diet soda are more overweight. And this always baffled me because the diet soda is so much lower in calories and actually doesn't contain sugar, it contains a sugar substitute. So how can that be? Is there something in the soda that makes people eat more or were they already extremely overweight and so the diet soda just isn't doing anything? So a lot of studies recently came out um, that address this. So if I go back a little bit, the American Heart Association has already proposed reductions in the consumption of soft drinks and all sweetened products. Now why would they do that? That's the Heart Association. It's not necessarily uh, being overweight. Why would the Heart Association uh, consider proposing guidelines to soft drinks and sweetened products. It turns out the conclusions uh, from research are showing that too much added sugar is absolutely definitely associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, which is heart disease. So it used to be considered that if you consume too much sugar, well, that was just part of someone that had an unhealthy diet, meaning they ate a lot of other foods that weren't considered healthy. Pretty much anything other than fruits and vegetables and whole grains, it was anything other than those foods. So that was the thought. But added sugar, in reality, should be only about 5% of your total daily caloric intake. So the American Heart Association isn't saying to completely eliminate sugar from your diet, um, and this is not including the natural sugars in fruits. This is added sugar, so this is added table sugar, and whatever food you're consuming should only be 5% of your total calories. It turns out only 1% of our population does this. Most people are consuming 15 to 25 percent of their total caloric intake is added sugar. Uh, and these are obviously very bad diets, but that's what most people are doing. So in the beginning, I was talking about diet soda. And um, when we talk about sugar, that's not diet soda. That's, that's standard sodas and other foods with added sugars. But Diet soda has now been linked to type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Well, you would think, how can that be? Um, and the link is almost as strong as a sugar-sweetened soda. So it turns out the artificial sweeteners increase our desire for sugar-sweetened foods at another time. And I always this when I looked at people that were consuming Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi, why they were always overweight. It's because of the cravings that come as a result of consuming the artificial sweeteners. What they do, and this is things like aspartame, which is NutraSweet, and um, sucralose and, and other sugar alcohols, it, they trick the brain into 
increasing a so-called pleasure response to food. So you end up really enjoying bad foods a lot more if you consume these artificial sweeteners. So you, you really enjoy your cookies and your candy and other sweetened foods way more than if you didn't consume the artificial sweeteners. So the solution from all of this is to eliminate all sweeteners. That is a hard thing to do, both artificial and sugar. Now when you do that for just one week, your brain will reset and you will lose that craving for sugar. And, and, and these cravings make you feel very good once you consume the sweetened food or, or the food with sugar. So if you're in this category, that is the only way to break the cycle, is to go cold turkey, no artificial sweeteners, or added sugars for one week. Um, and then you'll be essentially on the right path where you won't be craving sugar and uh, sugar-laden foods. It'll be a, a, a fraction of what you're craving now. All right, so that is what I wanted to open up the call with. And I'm going to now... And does anyone have any questions or comments uh, for this evening's call? Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Brewer, where does raw sugar fall into all of that? Yeah, good question. Uh, where does raw sugar fall in? So raw sugar what? does not have... Uh, and it wasn't bleached, essentially. And, and the bleaching agent is bromine. And bromine is very bad for our thyroid system. So that's what makes raw sugar so much better. It doesn't hurt you in more than one way. So it's still sugar. It's still going to be calorically concentrated with little to no nutrient value. But when it's raw, it also won't hurt your thyroid like white sugar, which has a bleaching agent, which is bromine. Um, but if you're going to consume sugar, raw sugar is a better choice than white refined sugar. And in the end, why are you using sugar? That's the question. If you're using sugar because you just absolutely positively are craving something sweet, that's what I'm talking about. That, that's actually a problem. That, that's something to fix. And the solution is to go seven days without sweeteners. And then you'll you won't be craving sugar, um, and you won't have to put it in everything you consume, like uh, sugar in iced tea, sugar in coffee, uh, sugar on top of cereal, believe it or not, people do that. So uh, I'm, I had a little bit of background noise, so I'm going to unmute a few people here. So did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Do we have any other questions, any health-related questions or anything on sugar and carbohydrates and sweeteners? You guys are being easy on me this evening. Okay, then. I will uh, wrap up this evening's call, and I will be having another conference call next Monday, same time. Until then, stay healthy. Good night, everybody. Good night.